Welcome to Real Chemistry. Today we're going to be talking about oxidation state and we're going to be going through the rules you need to calculate the oxidation state for atoms in a compound. But first, what is oxidation state? Oxidation state is kind of a tricky concept. What it's really talking about is thinking about who wins the tug of war for electrons in a compound. So if you have carbon monoxide, for example, you have a carbon atom and an oxygen atom and between them are a bunch of electrons. And because carbon and oxygen both have a positively charged nuclei because of all those protons, they're both pulling on the electrons between them. And we want to think about who wins this tug of war. And oxidation state is one way to decide who wins this tug of war. We're going to write down what oxidation state each atom has, and that's going to tell us basically how many electrons the oxygen effectively owns and how many electrons the carbon effectively owns. Now, you'll notice that carbon monoxide is a molecular compound. It's two nonmetals. It's not an ionic compound. So oxidation state's not the same thing as charge, though it's easy to get them confused. Oxidation state is telling you how many electrons oxygen would have if it broke up with carbon. So oxidation state, a little bit of a tricky concept. We're going to talk about how to calculate it. And you want to spend some additional time reading your textbook and thinking about what oxidation state means. All right, so how do we calculate the oxidation state for carbon and oxygen in carbon monoxide? Well, we need two rules to do this. So we have a single carbon and a single oxygen. And the first rule we have says the oxidation state for an element is the same as the charge you would predict from the periodic table. If you're not sure what I mean by that, go ahead and watch my video predicting the charge of ions. And there I go through the rules you need to predict the charge uh, an ion would have. And it turns out those same rules help us calculate oxidation state. So that's the first rule we need. And if we look at carbon and oxygen, you'll remember that we can't predict the charge on carbon. And we can predict the charge on oxygen. We know that the charge on oxygen is going to be minus 2. And that tells us our oxidation state on oxygen is going to be minus 2. Now, the next thing we need to know to be able to solve this problem is that the oxidation state for molecules adds to 0. So what that means is if we take this whole thing, carbon and oxygen together, the oxidation states have to add up to zero. Now all of this looks very similar to charge, but remember we're dealing with a covalent compound. It is not charged. It instead just has an oxidation state, which is talking about who's winning that tug of war of electrons. Now, if I need to have my oxidation state up add up to zero, and oxygen is minus two, that tells me that my carbon has to be plus two, because plus two, minus two gives me zero. So the oxidation state of my carbon is plus two and the oxidation state of my oxygen is minus two. That's the answer to my question. So those two rules are sufficient to calculate the oxidation state of carbon and oxygen. Now, the oxidation state of carbon isn't always plus two. It can be different than that and it depends on what molecule it's in. So if instead of carbon monoxide, we look at carbon dioxide, we'll see that its oxidation state, carbon in this case, is different. So we have CO2 now, and we still use the same rules, which tells us that the oxidation state for an element is the same as the charge you would predict on the periodic table, which means our oxygen is still minus two. But now we have two oxygens. And so each of our oxygens contributes negative two. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write in parentheses down here the total negative charge or the total negative oxidation state. I shouldn't use the word charge. That's wrong. It's actually the total negative oxidation state. In this case, it's going to be negative four. And that means that my total positive oxidation state must be plus four. If you spent much time balancing ionic compounds, this looks very similar. And since I only have one carbon, that means my carbon is plus four. So that's my final answer. Carbon has an oxidation state of plus four and oxygen has an oxidation state of minus two. Now, we're gonna add another rule. And you need this rule if you're gonna answer the question for nitrogen dioxide. Now we have nitrogen and oxygen. And this poses a little bit of a problem. Because if you recall, you can actually predict the charge on oxygen and you can predict the charge on nitrogen from your periodic table. So you need some set of rules that tell you, tells you who wins. Because if I just go to the periodic table, I'm going to say nitrogen is a negative 3 and oxygen is a negative 2. Why can't that be right? Well, if nitrogen is a negative 3 and oxygen is negative 2, 
then this whole molecule as a whole will have a negative oxidation state. And we know from rule two that our oxidation state has to be zero. So that can't be the case. So who wins? How do we decide this? Well, basically we just have a list that tells us you first take the oxidation state of fluorine. So if you have a bunch of different compounds or a bunch of different elements, then fluorine is the first element you wanna take a look at and you'll assign the oxidation state based on the periodic table position. If there's no fluorine, then you'll do it with hydrogen. If there's no hydrogen, then you'll do it with oxygen. If there's no oxygen, then you'll go on to the next element. Now, as you can imagine, this list continues for a little while, but you'll find that just remembering that fluorine beats hydrogen, hydrogen beats oxygen, and oxygen beats everything else will allow you to do the vast majority of your problems. So, this list tells us that oxygen beats everything else, and so that means that oxygen is going to win out in this fight with nitrogen. And even though nitrogen wants to have an oxidation state of negative three, it can't because oxygen's better at pulling these electrons towards it than nitrogen is. All right, so that means we're just going to assign oxygen the oxidation state of negative two because it's higher on that list. And again, we need the total charge of all this total oxidation state. Again, I shouldn't say charge. The total oxidation state to add up to zero. And we know that our total negative oxidation state is negative four because we have two oxygens both at negative two which means that our total positive oxidation state must be plus four once again and so that means our nitrogen has an oxidation state of plus four and our oxygen has an oxidation state of minus two and that's the answer to that question nitrogen has an oxidation of plus four oxygen has an oxidation state of minus two all right let's add one more rule here so sometimes you're not dealing with a molecular compound. Sometimes you have to deal with ions. And it turns out in an ion, you still have an oxidation state. So NO3 minus, in this case nitrate, that's one of our polyatomic ions, has a charge of negative one. So that actually changes just a little bit how you would calculate your oxidation states. And that's why we've added rule four down here, which tells us that the oxidation state for ions is gonna add up to the ion's charge. So if we think about drawing our box again, right? We have NO3. What this rule is telling us is that when I draw my big box, I actually need to put a negative one out here. I need my total oxidation states of all of those guys to add up to negative one instead of zero because I have a negative one charge on this nitrate. There's a negative charge right there. And that means that my total oxidation state on nitrate has to add up to negative one. All right. So. Once again, I'm going to assign the oxidation state based on the charge I would predict these elements to have on the periodic table. And once again, oxygen beats out nitrogen because it's higher up on our list. And so that means our oxygen again has an oxidation state of minus two. You notice a theme here. Knowing the oxidation state for oxygen helps you solve a huge chunk of these problems. And now we have three total oxygens. So two, negative two times three gives us a total negative oxidation state of negative six. Now what positive oxidation state do we need? Well, remember that this time we don't need them to add up to zero, we need them to add up to negative one. And that means our nitrogen must be plus five because plus five minus six gives us our negative one. And we only have one nitrogen, so that means the oxidation state on our nitrogen is plus five. So that's the answer to that question. The oxidation state of nitrogen is plus five, and the oxidation state of oxygen is minus two. So that is the rule for calculating the oxidation state for an ion. You just, instead of making the total oxidation state up add up to zero, you make it add up to the charge on your ion. All right, one last rule, and then we're done. And this rule is pretty straightforward. It says that if there's only one element in your compound, the oxidation state for everything in it is zero. So find the oxidation state for each element in O2. We have O2. There's only one element there. So what's the oxidation state? Zero. That one's super easy. And it applies to oxygen, like O2. If you saw H2, same thing would apply. It would have the oxidation state of zero. If you saw Ag, which is silver, just by itself has an oxidation state of zero. So anytime any of the atoms are just by themselves, there's only one element type, they have an oxidation state of zero. So those are a fair amount of rules and a fair amount to take in. So 
now that you've watched this video, I recommend you go on and watch my video oxidation state practice problems. And there what you're gonna do is you're gonna get a chance to practice applying these rules a few more times. So thanks for watching. Please leave any questions or comments you have below.